Assalamualaikum and peace be upon you. Okay, this is the third video lecture of logic representation. Uh, so, the learning outcome, again, I hope you will know what is logic representation and this time it is first order logic. At least you know what is the difference or the additional of uh, first order logic compared to the previous two logic, that is propositional logic and predicate logic. And I hope you will know how to translate a suitable knowledge into logic representation and you can critically think the advantage and disadvantages of each type of representation. So, as an added uh, from what I have listed, we have listed here. So, uh, now with logic representation, we have looked into production rules, semantic network, object attribute values, as well as frames. Okay, so first order logic. So, first order logic, try to model the world in terms of object, properties, relations, and functions. Okay, so they want to represent uh, by dividing the world or things around us into objects, properties of the objects, relationship uh, between the objects, as well as the function. Okay, where there is only one value for any given input. Okay, so if a uh, propositional logic or sentences is an uh, atoms. Okay, so this time everything around us is divided into four things and they try to uh, model the relationship between uh, the object, properties, relation and functions. Let's look at example. Now, to represent a car. Okay. Mm. To represent a car, so the object is car. Uh, and then the properties is blue. Okay, the relationship Maybe this car is owned by, okay, this car is used to visit someone, okay, bigger than what, okay, part of what, has color of what, okay, so that's uh, the relationship. And the function, okay, um, drive to school, for example, okay, um, what else, a uh, function of a car, um, Owned by is a relationship. Mm. Maybe functions mm. to pick up kids, alright, or go to work. Okay, so that is a function of a car. So this is an example how a first order logic try to explain about car. Okay. So, the user will need to provide a constant symbol. Okay, logic, remember, they use symbols. Uh, so, we have symbols and uh, we have a function symbol. So, function symbol is uh, father of Mary. So, remember uh, when you learn maths, you have X and then you have F and then you have X inside the bracket, right? So, same with this, father of Mary is equal to John. So, this is a function. And then, predicate symbol, okay? The outside, for example, this one, greater, okay? or green or color could be the uh, relation function or properties okay the one inside is object so for example this sentence five is greater than three grass is green so you can also write here a uh, shirt okay inside the bracket so grass and shirt are greens okay uh, if the output, if the outside is color, okay, so this is the relation, okay, or properties. So, grass color is green, okay. So, this is to map uh, individuals to truth values, okay, what is the values of each individual or objects. So, what is the addition in first order logic? Okay, they have a quantifier. Okay, so we will look at this, the universal uh, A or existen existential. At the same time, uh, FOL also have, sorry, okay, FOL also have connectives, okay, similar with PL, okay, and you also have symbol. Okay, 
So the first order logic, sentences are built from terms and atoms. So terms uh, describe the real world individual. Okay, it's, it, it is a symbol, can be a variable, okay, functions, and etc. Okay, and then we have atomic sentence, which has value, true or false. Okay, and then complex sentence. Okay, form from atomic sentences connected. Okay, so we connect the several sentences to get a complex sentence. And then we have a quantified sentence whereby we have the quantifier, the universal, and also the existential. Okay, we will look uh, at the example after this. And then a well-formed formula, okay, is a sentence containing no free variable. Okay, for example, for every x, okay, where x is p, y, has x bound as a universally quantified variable, but y is free. Okay, so let's, uh, as an example, say x is man, y is woman, and p is Mary's. So we can say this is every. Okay, for each, for every, okay, universal, so for every. So, for every man, okay, man likes woman, okay. So, they bound the X and Y, but Y is free. Y is not every, okay. So, in these sentences, we can say probably there is woman who marries a woman, alright. Because the sentence just said that every man marries a woman. They don't say anything about woman. Okay. That's just an example. Okay, so what are quantifiers? Okay, we have uh, the upturn A, okay, as a universal quantifier. That means it's... It says that everything, okay, every X, every P, every Y, every man, every boy, okay. So, in this case, okay, uh, for every X, where X is a dolphin, so that means every dolphin, okay, then X is a mammal. So, dolphin is a mammal. All dolphin is mammal, okay. Existential, that means some. There exists, okay, it's not all, okay. Let's do example here. Okay, there exists X where X is mammal and X lay X, lay X. Okay, so that means there are some mammals who lay X. So in another another meaning, okay, we say that there are mammals who doesn't lay X. Okay, they give birth. Okay, so this is the new uh, addition, okay, to the first order logic ok so more about quantifier universal quantifier often used with implies ok to form rules ok for example all student all x where x is a student then x is smart ok so if x is student so all student are smart ok Universal quantifier is rarely used to make a blanket statement about every individual in the world. Usually, we use it to form rules, not as a introduction, okay, not as a statement, okay. For example, here, there's no implies, there's no then, right? Look at here, you have then, implies. Here, there is no implies. So, we rarely say that every person, every X, where X is a person and X is a student. Okay, so every person is student. So it's quite dangerous to make a blanket statement with universal quantification because usually there will be some exception. Right? And then existential quantifier usually used with N to specify a list of properties about an individual. Okay, so existential is usually used as a statement. Okay, not an implies. Okay? So, that's how to use the existential and universal. So, some X where X is a person and X is a student. So, there are some person who are student. Right? 
Okay, quantifier, scope. Okay, switching the order of universal quantifier. You switch the order of all. Okay, does not change the meaning. For example, all x and all y, where x likes y is the same meaning with all y and all x, where x like y. Okay, because everybody and everybody doesn't change anything. Similarly, you can also switch the order of the existential quantifier. So this is a, uh, some x, some y, and here some y and some x. But if it's a combination of universal quantifier and existential quantifier, you cannot switch because it will change the meaning. Alright? So in this case, every x like some y, if you change it, you will become every man like some woman. Okay? You change this. Okay? Some y, every x. So, every x, okay, like some y. No. Some man likes every woman. Okay? So, it's different meaning. Right. Now, quantified uh, inference rules. Okay, this is a rules uh, of using a quantifier. Okay, you have universal instantiation, universal generalization, existential instantiation, and existential generalization. Okay, we look at this uh, in the next video lecture because this is already 10 minutes. So, take, take a break and then you can look at some exercise before you continue with the next uh, video. Thank you.